Today's episode is gonna focus all on It's a Small World. You know the attraction, you love it. How insane is it that this ride has been around for, what is that, 57 years, 55 years? I'm not good at math. This attraction is such a wonderful reminder of unity and that we truly all are one. As a figure finisher, my job was to enhance, maintain, and replace every single figure. And you cannot tell if it was touched. There are multiples of many of your favorite figures. And with the toy soldiers, as an example, they were casted and then they were painted and then put back in the attraction exactly the way they looked, only this time meant to last another 50, 60 years. And I can't believe the paper mache actually lasted that long. I do remember hearing that a couple of them were quote hot, which means I think they were positive for asbestos or something, which was really scary. I know a lot of the figures in Jungle Cruise were. I think anything that's outside that's fiberglass, I don't know really what happens with the elements that causes that to happen. It was just such a learning experience and I am so fortunate to have been able to buy an original It's a Small World doll. And from that doll, I sculpted my own version of the doll to a T exact and then casted it so that I could have my own It's a Small World dolls in multiple versions. So the versions of the dolls that you're going to see today, one is going to be the Holland doll, and that is the original doll that I own. And then the last set of five are going to be from the Brazil section. I've also been told Cuban. I want to know for sure because I don't want to give out wrong information because heaven forbid, Brazilians getting mad, Cubans getting mad. I definitely don't want Cubans getting mad at me. What's really neat is there's this giant book called the WED Enterprises Maintenance Manual. Every figure has a section and every section has like, okay, like Brazil, Russia, Cuba, Ireland. And that really goes to show the true detail and research that went into every doll. I know that Alice Davis spent quite a long time looking through tons of National Geographics to see the costumes so she can truly represent each country correctly. Mary Blair, she is such a true force to be reckoned with. What she did with color was amazing. And I remember Kim telling me, Kim Irvine, who was Leo Tomb's daughter, that she did not have very good eyesight, which is so ironic because everything she did was so beautiful. All right, everyone. So I wanna jump into the kitchen first before we get to Small World. And I'm just gonna make a quick chicken. I'm so excited. I already have most of it prepped. So let's go into the kitchen and then we'll get to Small World. everyone so here are the dolls they are on a very high shelf so i have to be up pretty high so i'm gonna just talk while i show you i think that's gonna be easier for me to really give you a detailed look here we have our little guitar player he's so fun i remember working on him in the attraction i believe his guitar is glittered in the attraction but i like mine just smooth he hasn't played yet but i think that if i did hear that at night i'd be a little afraid all of them have the same shirt, all the boys, this long sleeve striped shirt with a bandana and some hot pink pants. And they all have this straw hat on. It's a very vintage look. Chris's favorite doll. 
He is the doll with the maracas and he is such a fun figure. I really like his pose from the original in the 1966 version to here. He's so fun. He is such a whimsical character, full of personality. I like how his hat is just slightly tilted. These dolls are just truly special. I had to hand paint these maracas on. I could not find a maraca with that sort of design. So I just went ahead and bought some regular ones and painted them to the color scheme that I desired. Here we have the female dancing Brazilian doll. I'm really not sure what instrument she's holding. In the attraction, there are just two sticks, just like this. I added the gold earrings to her costume. That wasn't an original piece. I felt like she just needed them. The bow was actually really fun. I did not know how to make such a big bow. So what I did was I have some wire mesh and I just formed the fabric around it to give it the correct shape and the correct size. Her pom-poms are attached to a string and sewed onto the collar. The dress part of this doll took, I believe, the most time. Every single circle you see is hand glued onto the fabric. I could not find for the life of me a fabric that was spotted so sporadically. Either it looked like a Dalmatian or it just was too little or too small. So she truly is fully custom made and a gem to my collection. This doll truly beats to his own drum. I mean, look at him. He is just ready to dance, ready to party, and drum away. And here we have the horn player. He's really fun. I only have two of this particular head mold. And I decided to use one on him and one from the Indian version. I really like his pose too. Just this set of dolls is just so whimsical because they all have an instrument and it's just really animated. Up next, we have a Thailand doll. This doll was completely made from scratch, the costume. The most complex part of this costume would definitely have to be this collar swirl thing. I used a wire mesh for this, and then I formed it to shape, glued on the fabric, and sewed everything in. It took a long time. After that, this was probably the most time consuming, gluing each gem, sewing these on, sewing these stripes on. And one cool thing about this doll is she still moves. This sun was actually from my grandma's wind chime and I felt that it just fit perfectly with her. hypnotist doll. You can see him in the Indian part of It's a Small World. He is so fun. I had a really fun time with him. I think the most complex part, ironically, of his costume was his head wrap. It had to be such a unique shape and just the right size. So let's get a good look at him so you can see him in all of his magic.
last but certainly not least, here we have the original It's a Small World Holland doll. This is one of the top three crown jewels in my collection. She is such an absolute prize and honor to own. She has all of her original inner components still. Let me show you her blink. How cool is that? She just was the true inspiration behind all of my other It's a Small World dolls. I cannot wait to get you an up close look at her. This is the reason why I started this channel and the reason why I started these collection videos is to give you, the fans, an up close look at some of your favorite Disney films, characters, and props. So without further ado, here she is, an original It's a Small World doll from the Holland scene. Enjoy. Well, I hope you enjoy that up close and personal look at the It's a Small World doll. She is such a gem to look at every single day. I am just, again, so honored and thankful to own her. And I'm also thankful for you that you took the time to watch this video. And as always, everyone, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. And always remember, everybody, not just to follow your dreams, but to chase them. Mm -hmm.